in this particular video we are going to discuss about the risk assessment life cycle as per ISO 12100 what are the different steps of the risk assessment as per ISO 12100 will be discussed in this particular lecture so first step of the risk assessment is the determination of the limits of the machine now limits of the machine is determined taking into account of different phases of machinery life such as transport assembly installation then commissioning how the machine will be operated and after the life cycle of the machine is finished then how it needs to be dismantled or scrapping will be done so it covers the whole cradle to grave approach, whole uh, life cycle of the machine and what are the different limits of the machine throughout the life cycle. So limits can be with respect to the use limit, what are the different operating modes of the machine, what are the different industry in which the machine can be used, right? And then it can be what are the training level or skill level of the person who will be working on the machines. The limits can be with respect to the space limit also. How the human interaction with the machine will happen. What will be the space requirement for the person working with the machine. Then there can be time limits. Time limits can be with respect to the life cycle of the machine some machine can have a uh, time limit of 20 years right some life of some machine can be depending on the number of cycle it is going through then there can be other limits like properties of the material that is getting processed the required level of cleanliness of the machine which is particularly important if uh, the machine is used in the food or beverage industry or the environmental condition of the machine the condition in which the machine will be exposed to so after determination of all these limits then the next step is hazard identification again the hazard identification takes into account all the different phases of the machine life cycle. So it begins with the transport, assembly, installation, then commissioning, usage of the machine, and then dismantling and uh, disabling and scrapping. So this is called the cradle to grave approach and throughout the life cycle of the machine, this uh, hazard identification is done. So hazard identification can be done taking into account different parts or section of the machine, mechanism or function of the machine, material to be processed and environment in which machine is used. After hazard identification, the risk associated with each of the hazard is estimated. So there is a definite method through which this risk estimation is done and hazard rating number is given to each of the hazard. This helps to prioritize the risk associated with the, each of the hazard. After risk estimation is done, next step is risk evaluation. So we need to evaluate whether the risk is uh, really causing some issue or it is acceptable whether the risk is still under your acceptable limit or not and how much risk you want to reduce basically so you know the risk and every organization or country has a risk appetite or how much risk is can it can take or it can uh, it can continue to operate right so each organization will be having a certain amount of risk appetite 
some organization maybe may uh, go with little bit of high risk some organization will be uh, operating in a very low risk mode it also depends with the risk and cost or benefit to cost ratio so how much benefit you are getting or how much risk reduction you are getting with respect to the risk mitigation steps you are taking we can discuss uh, this in bit detail but this particular section we are more concentrating on the life cycle so i just giving you an overview so after risk evaluation and determining how much risk reduction we need to do we need to again ask this question whether this risk reduction is sufficient or not if it is yes then okay just document it and that is the end of the process but if the risk reduction is not sufficient then we have to go to the next step that is how the hazard can be removed is there any way we can remove the hazard first because this is the first step first we want to eliminate the risk you, you if you want to know what are the different um, risk reduction methodologies or fundamental of risk reduction there is another video uh, so that you should watch so that is risk reduction fundamentals so if hazard can be removed and if cannot be removed if whether it can be reduced by inherently safe design if hazard can be removed or if can, it can be reduced by inherently safe design, then it goes to the next step, which is risk reduction by inherently safe design measures. Okay. So, uh, so after this step, then it goes, is the intended risk reduction achieved? So again, uh, we are telling that we will be reducing the risk through inherently safe design, but whether we have achieved the required risk reduction or not. So again, we have to ask this question. Okay. If it is no, then again, it goes back to this stage, right? And again, it talks about can risk be reduced by the guards or protective devices? Again, if it is yes, then risk reduction will be done by the safeguarding. And again, we have to ask the same question, whether the intended risk reduction is achieved or not. If it is no, then again, it goes back and it talks about whether the limit can be specified again. So, so we have tried by removing the hazard. We have tried by using inherently safe design. We have tried by using guards or protective device still we are not able to reduce the risk so whether there is something wrong with the limits or we have to redefine the limits we need to have a relook on the limits again if the limits cannot be defined because we are we have done enough exercise there and from there we are very clear that this is our limits so the last step is risk reduction by information for use. So you have to use information for use to reduce the residual amount of risk. Now again, you have to ask the same question whether intended risk reduction is achieved or not. If it is yes, and all the three steps. So now you see the gray color, right? Gray color are the risk reduction measures. So what are they? Risk reduction by inherent safe design measures risk reduction by safeguarding and risk reduction by information of use and they have to be used in sequence means you should not use the risk reduction by information of you for use at the first and then you go for safe design this should not be done first step should be risk reduction by inherently safe design then risk reduction by safeguarding then risk reduction by information for use so this is the sequence that should be used and if you achieve the required risk reduction through these steps then well you go to the next step so while 
you you arrange all the safe design you arrange the safeguarding whether are you creating a new hazards right this is the question we need to ask okay we're trying to reduce one hazard while reducing this hazard we may be creating another hazard so that is the question we need to ask are other hazard are getting generated if it is no that is fine then we go back to this diamond where the risk reduction is sufficient yes document it and that is the end of the process but if it is found that other hazards are getting generated then we need to again go back to the first step of the hazard identification because now you have created new hazard and that hazard again needs to be identified risk estimation of that hazard needs to be done risk evolution or risk mitigation of that particular hazard needs to be done so one of the example maybe this is not related to machinery safety but i can give in uh, to avoid the speeding of the cars or vehicles in the road there are bumpers are given in the road or speed breakers are given in the road sometimes sometimes the speed breaker are so um, so high or the height of the speed breaker is so much that it creates more accident so that is a creation so to avoid the speeding of the cars we have created uh, speed breakers but the speed breaker are causing additional hazards right so what we how we can eliminate the this maybe we uh, color the speed breaker in a or we put some retro reflector there so that people can see the uh, bumpers before coming uh, near to the speed breakers or we can put some sign boards there right so these are the additional measures that we need to take so this is how uh, this whole process occurs now there is one step that is left that is if all the three risk reduction measures that we have talked about if none of them work then what we will do we'll again go back to the first step and that is determine the limits of the machine again and this is how the whole uh, risk assessment life cycle uh, works as per iso 12100 and uh, there are two things here one is this risk analysis this portion that is within this red box is called the risk analysis portion and th this risk analysis plus risk evaluation both together is uh, called the risk assessment 